Hello, and welcome to the Kathleen Spracklin Podcast. I am a woman on a mission, which at this moment is helping you get the zettle casting of your dreams on your work table beside you. Well, this time I'm answering a question for Michael, who wanted to know what do you do when you're trying to place a new card and you can't find a parent to join it to? And I have three answers for you. And I have the card set up to go through a number of examples with you to show you what you might do. You have a number of options and let's go through them so that you can have at your disposal what to do when you cannot find a suitable parent for your card. So head on over to the down facing camera with me and we'll go over it together. I'm going to go over three different ways that you can handle the situation when you have a card and you go through it and there is no card that is an obvious parent for the new card that you want to add to the Zettelkasten. Well, the first approach, and you can choose from among these, you're free among to choose any one that you like the best. The first approach is to say that, well, maybe you don't have anything that fits very well with the subject matter exactly, can you find something that ties in at all? Because if you uh, don't find any way that ties in, you're going to end up with an orphan card in your system. And orphans are pretty lonely, and it's best to always have a card to attach it to, if at all possible. Take this one, for example. It's a lovely quote from Paul Hauser. A well-written paper is like a poem. And he was referring to a scientific paper, which he has to read a fair number of these. And my reaction to it was that uh, densely packed and possibly full of non-obvious wisdom. That was how I related to this quote from Paul. And uh, my tagline to summarize the whole thing was a scientific paper like a poem may be full of wisdom. Well, I didn't have anything specifically talking about scientific papers in general in my Zettelkasten. So it seemed as though I had nothing to tie it to. And even though I'm a fiction writer, I'm not a poet, I didn't even have anything on poetry or the word poem. So what, what I went to was focusing on the idea of wisdom. And I came up with this card as a, a little bit of a stretch for a match, that we read great books to gain wisdom, not the acquisition of scattered truths. Now again, you can see that this is an older card, both from its size and from the fact that it doesn't follow the, my standard norms for a main card. But be that as it may, the two tie in it's a tenuous connection, but they both tie to something that you read to gain wisdom. I would choose this card as the parent and add it to this card's directory card. You can see that this card already has three children, and so this card, new card, would simply be 1G4B-2D. And I would add this, put that number up here, put the D down here, and put the tagline. It's close enough so that now my new card has its official home, this card, which also previously seemed difficult, which is talking about attribution, which usually happens in a scientific paper, how attribution actually creates a web of knowledge uh, backward in time, quite obviously, because it cites papers that were written before it. At the contemporaneously, as it points to different authors who are mentioned in the paper who may still be active. And it also has a link to the future in that this new paper will be cited by works of scientific papers that are written in the future. Now, even though this tagline, which summarizes the card, doesn't mention scientific papers at all, the fact of the matter is that attribution usually takes place within a scientific paper. So now, I have a natural parent for this one. You might say this card has no parent. Well, actually, it kind of does. So this card is going to be 1G4B-2D1. It's going to be this, choose this card as its parent. So again, it's a little bit tenuous for the link, but still you get a healthy conversation going when you let it follow a link that's close enough. The second card is from Find Your Why by... Simon Sinek, and uh, 
he says basically that intangibles get ignored because we don't explain, nurture, or measure them. And my reaction to that was that identifying intangibles and stating them clearly is the first step in explaining, nurturing, and measuring them. And so my tagline is identify and state intangibles so they're not ignored. If this card has if this card has no location in my system, I might want to go to a categories list if I'm using categories. So then I might find the proper category for business because that's what this is about. And I would probably choose 2320 purpose, goals, and philosophy for this card. If I were choosing to use a category system, um, you can always, that's one of the advantages of a category when you do use a category system, is it can give you a home for a card that does not otherwise have a parent. The interesting thing to remember though is that card is still an orphan. Yes, it has a number, it's, it would be 2320.1 and you continue your effortless numbering off from that, but that doesn't make it any less an orphan. And you really might find yourself wanting to do something else, find some other way to tie this card in rather than let it be an orphan. Here's my third example and that will give you yet one more method. This is a more advanced method than the other two and so um, if it if you find it difficult to understand, be aware that you don't need to use this. This, this is slightly more advanced and you can feel free to Ignore it and use your choice of the previous two. In this case, uh, I'm talking about a signal that I have used in the past that's worked successfully when I get frustrated because I'm not understanding something. I have a little trick, and that is that I put my hands over my eyes like the monkeys and see no evil, how that goes, hear no evil, something like that. Anyway, I cover my eyes with my hands, and then I say, I can't see, I can't see. And it's it reminds me to take a closer look at what it is you're trying to read and give another try at understanding it. Break it down, use your tools, analyze it, figure it out. Now, by that thing where I've ob obviously I'm covering my eyes and I'm saying I can't see, well, that usually lightens the mood for me enough so that I'm ready to give it another try. So my tagline on this is, signals from the subconscious, hands over eyes, can't see. Now, when I went to place this card, I had, I had nothing that really went with it. I had a card that sort of was vaguely along the same lines in that it also had the word subconscious in it. And this was talking about um, inviting the aha moment where you, you begin by cultivating curiosity. And, um, and you can use the method when you're feeling lost. If you take some deep breaths, you can actually convert feelings of lo being lost into feelings of curiosity. So breathe, breathe, and bring up your excitement and cultivate this sense of curiosity. And then give it, it intentional attention. And from there, you can... Uh, begin noticing extraordinary things, which will lead to the aha moment. And so the tagline is you with your subconscious in the aha moment. And I had an expanded reaction to it to go with it as well. These cards are tangential, but they don't quite connect maybe as well as I might like them to connect. So if I make a new general card that uses the next free number, I could make a more general card about the subconscious communicating back to me that would cover um, a, a more general case. Then after creating this new card, this card could become a child of the new card. So basically what I did in this method was I created a bridge card using the next free number in my 1M2A sequence. Here's where I was with my 1M2A directory card. I had gone up to three, and so I just used the fourth one to make a more a broad category that the subconscious communicates back to me. I expressed it as a personal reflection. I expressed it as a personal reflection, and then I tied the card I was struggling to place to this card, and then I would also link these two cards. So I hope that helps you, Michael, with figuring out what to do 
with your card if you can't find a parent. And of course, if you're using effortless numbering and your worst case is you can't find uh, any place for your card, and maybe that card is the start of some new research that you're going into, well, in that case, I would go to the next number in your effortless numbering system. In my case, I'm using one through four, and my next free number would be five. If I were launching into a brand new area of research for me that was going to be big in my future, I would not hesitate to use that number five and uh, give that card that number. So I, I hope with all of these options, you'll find an answer. And if not, post a question again, and I will take another stab at it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.